Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this type will be to take a closer look at some of the instruments you will be using in your amalgam polishing procedures. Since you're already acquainted with most of the equipment that you use during polishing, we're not going to go over that today. To begin with, I'd like to acquaint you with the instruments you will first use in polishing class two restoration. This is a Bard Parker blade, a number 12 blade, and it is primary in removal of overhangs, amalgam overhangs, interproximally. Now the best way to show you the effect of this, if you look very closely you can see a little spur of calculus here. And uh, I'll position the blade and show you the way it will be used in removing an overhang. You can see that it is used with much like a scaling stroke, but only the tip of this instrument is used. Use a very short controlled stroke and get right under the overhang to remove it. Now let's move to the interproximal surface itself. There's no real overhang here, but you can see how you would get under the overhang, a short, concise stroke, and use only the tip of the instrument. Now, if you wish, you can place a small piece of masking tape right over this area so that you don't do any damage to the gingiva when you're using it, when you're using the Bard Parker. But this is basically how this instrument is used. The rind trimmers are paired instruments, and they are used primarily on the buccoproximal and lingual-proximal margins of class twos. If we get a close-up here of the instrument, you can see that the head of the instrument is much like the periodontal files that are used in clinic. Okay, now this instrument is used with a pull stroke. the amalgam. And you use it primarily to smooth margins. It can also be useful in removal of overhangs. And I'll show you the other and you can see how this is shaped differently and of course this facilitates working on this particular aspect of the uh, interproximal here. But it's used with a pull stroke primarily to smooth the margins. And you can remove a good deal of amalgam with this instrument. The Weedle Stat is also a paired instrument for the smoothing of buccoproximal and lingual proximal surfaces on class twos. Take a look at this instrument. It's a chisel. and it has a rather long flat blade. This instrument is used with a push stroke unlike your scalers or your rind trimmer which needs a pull stroke to be effective. Now let's move to the amalgam and I'll demonstrate how it is used. You can see that I'm pushing against the margin of the amalgam restoration and again, amalgam is being removed, but the margins are being smoothed. And as I said before, this is a paired instrument. There are two of them for reaching interproximal surfaces. Now, after you've removed any overhangs or any gross amalgam interproximally, you'll want to move to your sandpaper disc. You have two basic sizes of sandpaper disc. The Moore's Mandrel 
and its related disc, which is a larger disc, and the pinhole, which is a much smaller disc for getting into uh, interproximals that may be too small for your Moore's mandolin disc. Before you use any disc, you should flex it a little bit so that it'll be adaptable enough that you won't be doing any gingival laceration. To prevent notching, you want to use a smooth in and out motion. Don't go straight into the contact. You may abrade it and ruin the anatomy of the interproximal. Let's take a close up here and see. Again, polish only the buccoproximal and lingual proximal surfaces of the amalgam. The concluding steps to finishing the polish of a class 2 amalgam would be to use finishing strips. Point the strips on one end, then you may thread it through the contact. In other words, don't bring it down through the occlusal of the contact, but thread it through the teeth. Otherwise, you may abrade the contact and ruin the occlusal anatomy, the interproximal anatomy of the class 2. Uh, also, after you've used your finishing strip, you may go ahead and use dental tape and pumice as the very final step on a class 2. Now, from talking about interproximal surfaces, let's move to the polish of occlusal surfaces. When you remove gross amalgam of any kind on the buccal, lingual, or occlusal surfaces, you will be using your green stone. Now, there are several shapes of green stones. We will be using the carrot shape. Use only the tip of the green stone and use your light intermittent pressure with a high rotational speed. Now this particular uh, stone won't do you any good working in uh, small defined areas such as working on the anatomy. But again, it removes a lot of amalgam and it's so used in situations of gross deposit. Okay, after you've used, removed any gross amalgam, you'll want to go to your 242 or your flame-shaped burr. This is the thinnest of your burrs and it's the easiest to abrade with this burr. Now if you look closely, you'll see that this burr should not be used in the interproximal because of the notching that it would do. It's fluted. Okay, now this burr is used particularly in the, in the buccal groove and the lingual groove areas of the occlusal. You can see how it's shaped to just fit in there. And those little cupped out areas of the And this may be the only burr you can use in this instance, in these areas. Now you may also use your 242 burr on class 5 amalgams. Again, just be careful that the point abrades neither the cementum nor the tissue. Okay, now we're going to go to the plug finishing burrs. There are three sizes and we usually work from the smallest to the largest. The smallest burr is used to define anatomy. Now, when you are cutting your grooves in the uh, anatomical form, don't aim for long, pointed troughs. Rather, have a more rounded type area so that it will be easy for your patient to keep it clean.
Okay, so you cut your basic anatomy with the smallest burr, then you will move to your medium-sized plug finishing burr. Now I'll emphasize that these are not particularly cutting burrs, but they are finishing burrs. Now your medium-sized burr is best for going over the margins of the restoration and also for embellishing any anatomy. Now when you work along the margins of any restoration, you may either do as I am doing, going back and forth between the tooth and the amalgam, or you may go ahead and run up right along the edge of the amalgam. I think when you uh, go from tooth to amalgam, you have a bit more control. One point that should be emphasized. You should constantly be reevaluating your margins with your explorer during your amalgam polishing procedure. The explorer should move smoothly between enamel and restoration. Now, again, you will remember that there are going to be areas of fissure between the tooth and the amalgam, and there's nothing that you can do about that. The object is to bring the margins as close to the enamel as you can. Once you've established the margins and the occlusal anatomy the way you want it, you may smooth out the final polish with your largest plug finishing burr. You may notice there is a slightly wrinkled or pitted effect on the surface of the amalgam, and this, is, this burr is excellent for putting a high finish, a very smooth high finish. It's a rare amalgam that can't be finished down to the consistency of almost satin. It, it just gets, can be gotten very smooth with this final burr. Okay. And I think if you look closely, you'll see how smooth the surface has become. There's no more pitting or roughness. It's just the consistency of satin, as I said before. There you have basically uh, proper instrumentation for use in both your class two and your class one amalgams. With your class five amalgam polishing, you'll be using basically your sandpaper disc and rubber cup polish. And don't forget to always use separate rubber cups for your tin oxide and your pumice polishes. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.